Scotia Denture or a macro wave. Well, there's my G on the CSE. Billy J getting down with the VBA. Oh my, it's a dual and XL guy. Stand by, it's a dual and XL time. Oh my, it's dual and XL time. Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 176, embedding a helper column and an array formula. Also, start time and end time. Well, Mike, this duel is a doozy. I, I have a solution and I'm hoping that you have a much better solution. Here's here's what we have for now. The data is going uh, from earliest at the bottom to latest at the top. And you see that for each day, there's some event that ha happens, right? So at 1416, uh, we went from 0 to 3, and then 9 and 10, and it trails off. And this one event happens every single day, only once every day. So here we went from 0 to 2 to 1 to 64, 5, 3, 2, 0, right? And then on the 7th, from 0 to 5, 3, 2, 6, down to 0. And the goal is to find the start time and end time for each of those events, all right? And here is the only way that I was able to come up with to do this. I, I went down to the bottom of the data, data set. I said, all right, we're going to do equal if. We're going to check to see if three things happened. Uh, first off, is this date equal to the prior date? Is the prior value equal to zero? And is this value greater than zero? If all of that is true, then I say first. This is the first event of the day. All right, now, uh, what to do if it's false? If it's false, then I check and see if it's the last event of the day. So we check to see if, uh, here again, the uh, date in this cell is equal to the date in the cell above us. If the cell above us is equal to zero, and if this cell is uh, greater than zero. If all of that's true, then we have last. All right. If neither of those are true, then it's either a zero or something in the middle. Um, I'm just going to put no there, right? Like it's neither of those. All right. Now, oh, and then uh, one more to close the if function. All right. So that is going to build uh, words for me. Uh, that indicate whether it's the first or the last, all right? But then I'm still not done there because what I'm going to have to do is concatenate the uh, date, today's date. Uh, so I'll press F2, go right, and I should have pressed Control Enter there, but I didn't. All right, so we need that helper column uh, out there on the right. Once we have that helper column, then, uh, then it becomes something like this equal VLOOKUP of the word first concatenated with the date, and I'll press F4, 1, 2, 3 times to lock that down, into this range here, three cells, F4, comma, 3, comma, false, and that will show me the start time each day. Uh, to get the end time, uh, instead of concatenating the word first, I'm going to concatenate the word last. Yep. And there you have it. Um, it's horrible to me that I had to create this huge set of helper cells out here. I want to see if you have anything better. Thanks, Mr. Excel. And it's great to be doing duels again. Now, I like your helper column here because check this out. That formula creates an exact lookup item, first with the serial number date and last. And then over here, boom, you just create a lookup formula. Now, I'll take a slightly different take on this. I'm going to notice that in this column here, if I control shift tilde or grave accent, Yes, those are serial numbers, right? So because they're numbers, control Z, I'm going to build a helper column that checks whether there's a number greater than 0 over here and multiplies it by the serial number date. So I'm going to say, hey, give me the serial number date times in parentheses, and this will be a Boolean logical test. 
are you greater than 0? Close parentheses. Now, there's only two values that this little inner part evaluate to, true or false. When it's a false, like here, false times a number will give us 0. When we copy it down here and we get it true over here, it'll be true times this number is like 1 times the number, and it will give us the serial number. Double click and send it down. So in essence, I've created a column where I filtered out the serial numbers I don't want with zeros. Now, I don't have a unique identifier like Mr. Excel, but I'm going to take this little block here, this little block here, use the actual serial number from this date, and do lookup last and lookup first. Now, I'm looking up the start time, but in essence, the start time is last in this list. And then the end time will be the first one. So I'm going to come over here to start time. And I'm going to use the lookup function, because the trick for lookup last is we're doing approximate match lookup. And lookup automatically does approximate match. I'm going to look up a big number. And the big number is 2, because when I get to this lookup vector, I'm going to have errors and 1s. So 2 will be bigger than any number 1. And the way approximate match lookup works is if you give it a big number, it'll always find the last number. The array is going to be 1 divided by, and then in parentheses, I'm going to highlight this whole column, Control, Shift, Down Arrow, F4. And I'm going to say, are any of you equal to this date right here, relative cell reference? Close parentheses. Now, what this little bit right here does, F9 is the divide by zeros would be the filter. And we'll only get ones where we see that serial number. The 2 will be looked up. And because we're doing approximate, it'll always get the position of the last one. That's how lookup vector does. It's kind of like the match function, Control Z comma, and then result vector, we simply give it the times, Control, Shift, Down, out F4. And that's lookup last, close parentheses, Control, Enter, and double click and send it down. If I go to the last cell and hit F2, boom, it looks like it's working. Now to get the first, we notice that if we're doing exact match in either VLOOKUP or match function, I'm going to use VLOOKUP. If we have the last argument as false, anytime it sees duplicates, it'll automatically get the first one. So the lookup value, boom, comma, and the table. It's this entire table. First column has the helper column. Last column has the time. Control, Shift, Down, Arrow, F4, comma, 3 to get the item from the third column, comma, and 0 for exact match. That forces when there are duplicates to only get the first one. Control, Enter. Double click and send it down. And then we can check this. It looks like 748 is the start time, and 751 is the end time. Now, if we didn't want to have this helper column, I want to notice something. If I look at this, it's the cell from the date column, and then there's a cell from the value column, Enter, F2, Enter, F2. Anytime we have a helper column that's looking at two columns, we can kind of simulate this, but instead of the C5, I put the whole column here. Instead of the E5, I put the whole column here right into our formula. Now, I'm going to copy this first formula here, Control-V and F2. And the beautiful thing about this array calculation is lookup can handle array operations without any special keystroke. So it's really that little bit right there, which is our helper column, that we're going to need to simulate. So I'm going to highlight the date column, Control shift down arrow F4, and multiply it in parentheses times the value column, Control shift down arrow F4. Are any of you greater than 0? Close parentheses. Now, this array operation here will work. We have multiplying first. We're forcing the greater than operator before the multiplication. Then it will multiply, and then it will get that comparative operator sign, equal sign, Control enter double click and send it down. That gives us lookup last or the start time. Now I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to copy this whole little bit whoop, right here, because I'm going to use this a second time. That, in essence, is simulating our helper column, Control-C, Escape. And now I'm going to use equals index and look up the values, the times, Control-Shift-Down, F4, comma. And I'm going to use the match function to look up serial number, date, comma within this array. Now I'm going to Control V. And actually, I don't need all of this. All I need is the little part that simulates the helper column. 
comma, zero to get only the first item when we have duplicates, close parentheses, close parentheses. And because that argument right there can't handle that array operation, without the special keystroke, we have to use Control, Shift, and Enter. I look up to the formula bar, I see my curly brackets, double click and send it down. Now, if you want to get tricky and not use Control, Shift, Enter, guess what? That whole array operation, we can put it inside of index. Like lookup index is one of five functions that can handle array operations without control shift enter. But I need the whole column, in essence, to be delivered to the match. So watch this. Because a column is filled with rows inside of index, comma, the rows. To get all the rows delivered, I leave that argument empty. Close parentheses. And that will work with just Control Enter, no Control Shift Enter. Double click and send it down. All right, we'll send it back to Mr. Excel. Mike, 10,000 points to you. That was the most coherent explanation of how to take a helper column and embed it right in the formula two different ways. Uh, absolutely awesome. Yes, it's great to be doing Dueling Excel podcasts again. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun. It's Dueling Excel time.